All right, so welcome back to our third installment of TradingView Tutorials here. Uh, trying to get you up to speed, fast, quick, and in a hurry. Uh, so that way you can spend less time trying to figure out how to use TradingView and more time trying to figure out how to make money, right? So uh, the, since we've already looked at the uh, color themes now, as well as the indicator templates, uh, we've also looked at the uh, how to change your candlestick types, how to change your time frames. Uh, and we've also looked at the difference between linear and log scale, uh, so at this point here, uh, you know, last time I was talking about uh, right up here when you select your layout, if you have multiple layouts. And let's say you're in this, um, and this is the layout that's in your first spot here, but let's say you just want to change the order of your layout. So if you want this one to go to the first spot for them to change places, what you would do is right click on the chart, go to move chart, and move forward or back in this case because there's only two. But if there was four or more, obviously, or three or more, you know, you'd have to move it more times. But you hit the forward, and as you notice, they change space. You know, they change spots here. Now that's helpful because let's say you have multiple charts on here. Let's say you have two or four, uh, and you decide, you know what? I just want to go ahead and keep the one on there now. I want to go ahead and get rid of the other ones I have, but I don't want to have to redo that chart. So what you would do is just move it to the front. Let's say it's this one here. Again, you would move charts to the first space, and then when you go up here and you click the single chart, it is the only one that stays. Now, when you do this, you can come right up here. This tells you the name of whatever this chart is. So you can click on that, and you can go down to rename. And when you go down to rename, you can name it whatever you want. So uh, in this case, this is the uh, S&P 500. And so that ticker is SPX. And if we save that, as you'll notice, it saves it up here. Now, also up here, you notice I've got auto save on. So every 10 minutes... It's going to save an updated version of the chart. If you leave before it updates, uh, let's say uh, you're doing something like this. Notice how it changed to this um, dashed cloud up here. If you try to exit before that, it'll, it'll ask you, are you sure you want to leave? Because some changes will be unsaved. If you want to make sure that you're saving what you already have on there and it hasn't auto saved yet, so it looks like this, just go ahead and click it. And you'll automatically save it at that point. Uh, again, you can do that at any time uh, by just going to the rename. You can go here and you can new, you can load a new chart or load any other chart you have. Let's say you want to pull up a specific chart. Maybe you're keeping uh, keeping tabs on a certain stock or a uh, forex pair that you've already saved, you've named and saved already. You can go to load chart layout, and then you have them listed here. And the ones that you put you know you put the stars by those will be the ones that pop up first in that. But you can type in whatever you want. FB, get your Facebook. Uh, whichever ones you happen, you know, these won't be the ones you have if you don't have them set up on yours. But they're ones that I have on here. Uh, SPSC, there you go. Uh, you can look at um, Forex pairs. Just typing them in there. You can look at, um, at cryptocurrency pairs that you might have on there as well. Uh, let's say, oh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Let's say Siacoin. There we go against Bitcoin. See, and, then, and it also brings you up all the other charts where maybe you have multiple charts on there where it's listed in there as well. Uh, so you just use that from the load chart layout um, option over there. Now, um, that gives you all of that there. If you want to, this is something that you should probably do down here. You'll, you'll see it says time zone down here. Make sure you go ahead and update that for your particular time zone. Uh, that way your charts match your time and what you're looking at. Or if you just want to go off the UTC time, you can just click that there. But that way down here where it tells you your time, it'll be wherever it's set. Uh, as you see, as you zoom in, it kind of spreads out here and gives you more time in between. This is the one hour chart here. As you can see, it says 60 minutes. And so, uh, you know, the more we spread it out here, the more it starts showing you the one hour or the two hour, whatever happens to be, however close you're looking at it there. Uh, so that'll get you set up with that. Um, if you want to show what's on your chart here, uh, let's say, you know, you've got all these. Um, and remember the, the you know, if, if you use the regular or the pro or the premium, the higher the level of the package that you buy, the more things you can have. So you can end up having a whole bunch of indicators here. And let's say you don't want to show those off. Let's say you just want people to concentrate on your idea. So what you can do is go up here to this little down arrow, and you click that, and it ticks it all up. Notice everything 
has been taken up down here as well. See, when you click this back down here, notice each one of these. This tells you it's RSI. It tells you the intervals on there. Uh, and as you put your cursor over here, it tells you right there, that white number tells you what the reading is. Or if you don't have it on there, it tells you what the, the, re the latest reading is there. Same with your MACD there. Um, but again, you can just click that up and it shoot, takes all these over there so that you have them off there so people can concentrate just on uh, what you're showing there. Um, so that will be that. I was going to show you uh, these indicators here. I'll go ahead and do that uh, on this next video now. I just wanted to go ahead and um, update you with those few things. Uh, that way you would have them set there. The only other thing I'm going to show you before I go here real quick is that you can set indicators, or um, I'm sorry, uh, that you can set um, alerts on your chart. And so however you want to set your alerts, these are great ways to be notified when you're not looking at the chart. So let's say you see this here and you go, man, there's a good channel right here. I'm just, I'm interested in buying that channel breakout, but I don't want to sit here and look at it all day. Maybe I've got a job. Maybe I've got to do something else. But what you can do is you can set th this channel up here. Uh, and then when you right click on it, notice it says add alert on parallel channel. You click that. It comes up here and it has all the different options here. You choose whatever you want. Only once, once per bar, once per close, and it gives you a highlight, you know, it tells you what each one of those does. Open-ended means it happens every time. Expiration time means if you're, let's say you're only interested in buying a breakout that happens before whatever day and time you want to put up there. All right. Then you can set here, you can notify you on the app. It can show a pop-up which will appear right here in your screen. It can send you an email, a webhook URL, and then your message here. This is the default message on this, but you can put whatever message you want in there. Uh, and so in this case, the condition here is entering, but we want it exiting the channel. So up here we go to exiting the channel. And now, as soon as price was to leave that, when, it hap when this happened here, it would have sent an alert that lets you know that that was coming up there. Now, you can also set alerts on price levels. Let's say you're interested. You're watching this swing low over here. So this one's at $3,214.70. So you get over here and see how you notice when you bring your cursor just to the side of the time or the uh, price here, you get that little plus sign. You set that where you want, and that sets an indicator at alert at that price. You click that. Now... It'll set you, it'll set you um, a message there. It'll send you a message if it happens to drop below that swing low there. As always, you can double click on it. You can say crossing, crossing up. So if it's only crossing up, in this case, you would look for a crossing down. You could hit that. Uh, greater than, less than, all these different moving up percentage or down a percentage, all these different things um, that you can do there. And then you put the value here. And so the value here, this swing low is at 32.14 and 70 cents. 32.14 and 70 cents. Again, open-ended means it will always do it until you turn the uh, alert off. Every time it crosses this, because we got it set to crossing, every time it crosses this, until you get rid of that, it'll set you an alert. And it'll tell you right here it's crossing whatever, and plus whatever else you want to add in that message. Whatever else you want to add in there. Um... So that's the, the way you do that. If you want to delete it, obviously just go here and delete. Are you sure you want to? Yes. And then up here, it'll show you your alerts that have gone off. When you click on that, you can see these are the alerts that you're waiting and some of them have gone through. These are the ones that went off and when they went off. It tells you the timing and whatnot on all those. And so again, it's just another way to help your trading uh, with what you're doing here. So now in this next video, finally, we'll get to uh, these other uh, indicators here and how to how to use them and how to find them and set them up real quick there.